Hey there, Wire Weaver. Today we're going to practice a fun chasing hammer technique that creates the beautiful light bouncing texture that you see here. Hammer textured jewelry never seems to go out of style, so this technique is a good one to add to your skill set. This video is part two of my chasing hammer series. In case you missed it, you'll find a link to part one in the description below. My name is Wendy and I'm the Wire Weaver behind Door 44. If you want to learn to make wire jewelry, this channel's for you. Before we get started, be sure to download the free hammer texture tip sheet that goes along with this video. Go to door44studios.com 108. That will bring you to the page that you see here. If you already have a password, click on resource library at the top of the page. Type in your password at the prompt and download your tip sheet. If you don't have a password, click on get a password instead. Then follow the instructions to get your password which you'll receive immediately. Then click here to get to the library, enter your password at the prompt and click enter. Once you're in, you'll find all resources listed in chronological order with the most recent file at the top. The hammer texture tip sheet is number 108. Just click that link and your tip sheet will download immediately. So before we get started, let's talk briefly about texturing tools. This is just a standard chasing hammer, and this is all I use for texturing. Because I have a limited space, I try to keep my tools to a minimum, and this little hammer here does everything I need it to do. It leaves a beautiful, classic hammered texture, and that's what I'm after. But if texturing is your jam, or if you work with sheet metal, there are loads of different tools on the market. There are hammers with interchangeable heads with very different textures. You can get rolling mills with texture plates that will leave beautiful imprints on your wire. So if you're interested in texturing, if you're interested in working with sheet metal, definitely explore the tool options out there. But today we're just going to do a classic hammered texture, just using our standard jeweler's chasing hammer. So just a reminder that this is part two in a two-part series. In part one, I talked a lot about the anatomy of a chasing hammer, how the handle is designed, why it's designed the way it is. And I pointed out that you have this bulbous handle here and this deeper curve of the handle is on the planishing face of your hammer. And here we have a shallower curve. It's, it's almost straight. And that's on this peening side of the hammer. And the reason that handle is designed that way is it controls spring back. So when you're planishing, you want that head to land and stick. You don't want it to bounce. And that's because we're going to do a drawing stroke. So we're going to land and pull, land and pull. When we're peening, we actually do want quite a bit of spring back. We want that ball to just make contact with our wire and bounce off. So we want more of a bouncing vertical texture. We're not going to draw. We don't pull on the peening stroke. We just strike and come off, strike and come off, strike and come off. And this straighter handle helps with that spring back. It makes the head want to bounce rather than just land and stick. The proper position for your hand is at the ball. You want to grip that ball. And when we're peening, we're going to turn this over so that we have the straighter side of the handle facing down. And you want your fingers around that straight portion of the handle, just like that. And your palm's just going to wrap around this more curved grip. And you, you can put your thumb there if you like. I tend to keep my thumb around on the side. And what that does is it gives you maximum control. Now it's tempting to want to grab the handle up here, but in part one of this series, I gave you an exercise to practice with different hand grips, gripping up here at the top of the hammer and then gripping here at the back. So if you want to check out that exercise, I will link to the part one video right up here in the right hand corner and you can go back and practice that exercise. We're going to do another exercise today that's going to help you feel the difference between planishing and peening. So again, go ahead and grip your hammer in the planishing position. So deeper curve around your fingers and palming your hand wraps around the flatter part of the handle. Now just lightly tap the head in your hand and feel how it responds. Does it feel like it wants to just stay there or does it feel like it wants to bounce and come off? Just play with that for a minute. And then let's flip our hammer over into peening position, flat side of the handle along the bottom of your fingers and your palm's going to curve around this deeper curve here. And now let's do the same thing. How does that feel? Does it feel like it wants to bounce or does it feel like it wants to stick? Now, part of that is because the smaller contact area, the smaller contact area you have, the more bounce you're going to have. But also, 
that has to do with this straighter part of the handle, giving you a little bit more spring back. So this is a good exercise to just practice when you first pick up your hammer, just to kind of get a feel and to remember that your peening strokes are just vertical strokes, just like you see here in this diagram. We're gonna go straight down, whereas the peening stroke, you come down and draw, down and draw. Okay, now that we've talked about how the handle works and how to feel the difference between peening and planishing, we're going to go ahead and start texturing this wire. Now, another thing that I pointed out in part one of this series, when you're planishing, you want to keep your hammer in the same relative position so that you're always striking pretty much in the same spot. And you're going to move your wire around to get your planishing done. Now peening is going to be a little bit different. With peening, because it's more of a vertical motion, we're just coming down, we're not drawing, we're just coming down and up, down and up, down and up. So in this case, we're going to work along the length of the wire and we're just going to make even strikes and I'm going to focus my attention on the edges of the wire. Because we don't have a lot of surface area here, you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck if you texture the edges of your wire. Now, if you're texturing sheet metal, that's a little bit of a different story and it's a little bit of a different approach. But because we're just working on wire here, we are going to texture all along one edge of the wire and we're gonna try to get sort of an even scalloped look to that edge. And then we're gonna turn around and work on the other edge of the wire. And what you're gonna find is as we do that, you're gonna end up texturing the whole surface of the wire. Notice how much light bounce you get on those edges. Because the wire surface isn't very wide, you do end up getting a nice even texture along the whole width of your wire, but you also get a lot more light play because it's those edges where you can really have an impact. You see how that works? All right, so let's go ahead and start texturing this piece of wire. Now I'm gonna be using very light strokes. I'm not going to strike heavily and I'm going to try to keep them even and I'm just going to try to scallop that edge. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, let's see what we got here. So you can see my strikes aren't super even. This is a little tricky to do on camera because I've got a camera between my work and my face, <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and work that just a little bit more, try to get it a little more even. And again, remember that you wanna, you wanna follow the length of your wire. Notice that I'm falling off to the outside edge of the wire. It's because I'm really focusing, I'm really focusing my attention on that outside edge. And that's looking a little bit better. It's starting to starting to come together there. Still a little bit of uneven patches where I, you know, didn't get even strokes. You want to try to achieve a nice consistent scallop along the edge. So I'm just gonna keep working. Now that's starting to look a little nicer here on this side. This side I'm still I'm still missing and I think part of that is just the way that I was holding it over here so I'm going to rotate this around where I have a better better view of it. I'm going to work my way around that edge and that looks a little bit better. See that? Okay, so that I'm pretty satisfied with the outside edge of my texture now. So now I'm going to focus on this inside edge. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to follow the line of the wire. Work my way around. And there you 
take out. You can see that now that I've got that inside edge scalloped and textured. We're getting a lot of nice light play there. And you can see that the center doesn't have much texture yet right here. So I'm just going to put a little bit heavier texture on that inside edge and see if I can even that out. Again, getting a nice pretty texture in there. So this is something that takes a lot of practice. It takes a while to get a feel for using the hammer. It takes a while to get a feel for what you like in terms of how much texture you want. Now the thing about this ball is the lighter the stroke you use, the smaller your dimples are going to be. The heavier stroke, the larger your dimples. But you want to be careful. You don't want to use too heavy a stroke. Notice that I'm, I'm tapping relatively lightly and probably with a lighter hand than I do when I'm planishing. So when I'm planishing and I'm trying to draw out the width of this wire into this nice thick flat look that I've got here, I'm gonna come down with a fair amount of force to do that. When I'm texturing, I don't wanna to use too much force because if you do, you start getting a sloppy looking texture and you're also gonna run the risk of distorting your wire quite a bit. So you can really change the shape of this wire if you come down too hard with your hammer. You don't wanna do that. You just wanna use fairly light, even strokes. And you can kind of work back and forth between the edges. But I'm not using very heavy force to make that texture. So practice this on various gauges of wire. This is 12 gauge wire. This is a really good gauge to practice on. Anything 16 gauge and up is going to give you a good sense of planishing and texturing. But the heavier gauge you can use, the easier it is to see what you're doing, the more width you can get with your planishing. So it gives you a little bit more surface area to texture. And that's just going to help you get a better feel for how to use Use your hammer to get a pretty texture that you love. So to wrap this video up, let's talk about the key points to remember when you're texturing wire. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you relax any tension in your body. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed, your arms are relaxed. You want to have a firm but gentle grip on your hammer. You don't want a death grip. You don't want a lot of tension in your hands. You just want a light, relaxed, comfortable grip. Another important thing to remember is is you don't stroke when you're peening with a texture head. You want to make contact and come off. So just vertical contact only, no stroking. If you're working on a straight piece of wire, you're just gonna wanna hold your wire steady and just work your way along the length of that wire and then come down the other side. For a round piece like this, you do have to move it a certain degree, but you do get better texture if you move your hammer along the length of the wire and not move your wire. Another key point to remember is you want to focus your intention on the edges of the wire. Make very intentional strokes and aim for that edge. And you're going to fall off the edge a little bit so it does look like you're doing a little bit of a drawing stroke. That's not the case. It's just the ball gliding along the edge of the wire. And then the last key, of course, is just to practice. Once again, be sure to download your free hammer texture tip sheet if you haven't already done so. Just go to door44studios.com 108 and follow the prompts. That's it for today's lesson, Wireweaver. I'll see you next week. In the meantime, go make something beautiful.